Okay, I thought I'd get some video of uh, some of the work I've been doing on replacing the spindle bearings and my machine. Um, didn't initially plan to set out to do that, but um, in the process of trying to take them out to re-grease them, um, I really banged up the uh, lower bearing, um, getting the shaft out, so um, ended up having to get new bearings. So anyway, um, I was going to take a video because it wasn't always immediately obvious to me um, when I first started working on this how everything fit together and um, ways to go about getting them out and getting them back in. So, start off I'll kind of show you what you got. Um, down here on the shaft you've got the, the larger of the two roller bearings. Um, so this is the new one that I've just put on. Um, this is a really, really tight tough fit, at least on the uh, on the machine that I have. Uh, I had this shaft completely frozen, so this guy was frozen solid um, in my deep freeze, and I had this guy at um, close to 260-270 degrees out of the oven. And um, even with that temperature differential, I still could not get them to just slip together. Um, like I had posted, as soon as I got this bearing started, I mean it slipped I think maybe about a quarter of the way down onto the journal and then it locked itself on there solid. Um, I could not get it to move forward or backward um, with any kind of reasonable just pressure. So what I ended up having to do <clears throat> was to take the old uh, main spindle bearing and I basically cut this cage off that has all the rollers on it and just kept the race. And the reason I did that was I could then take this race, slide it like so, to face the uh, the bearing, and then I could take this whole shaft, bring it over here to the vise, and set it um, set it down so it rested on the vise jaws, and um, then use the good old rubber mallet to uh, go ahead and kind of, well, gently persuade it, you know, sarcastically speaking, um, to go ahead and, and slide all the way back down onto the journal. Uh, so that race was really handy because that meant that I had nice even pressure all the way around and um, any of the pounding the force was going to be, uh, any scrapes or dings or what have you would be on this. Um, and not the real bearing race. So that was one way. That was how I got the uh, the lower bearing on there. Uh, I would have preferred not to have to pound. Um, one of the things I may be considering getting here pretty soon is an uh, arbor press so that I can do this without pounding because um, these are definitely not drop fits, at least not on this machine. Okay, so anyway, um, these are the inner races um, on both of these. This is the new upper bearing. Um, as you see this one slides down and now you've got the both the tapers um, kind of facing each other and uh, then it should slide down all the way onto this journal. Um, this fit is again not an easy one. I've had this shaft frozen and um, this guy at room temperature and it won't even it won't even act like it's going to start to go onto that journal. Uh, so I'm going to try tomorrow to bake it fairly, uh, get it fairly hot, and see if I can get it onto a frozen shaft. If that doesn't work, then um, what I may do is put this in the lathe and see if I can't um, maybe just polish off a tenth or two on this and see if that can help me get it going without so, quite so much pressure. Um, otherwise, I may be looking at a uh, arbor press to do basically the same thing. Now, the reason I said online is that these races are handy is because that will also give you a nice, flat, easy surface to um, push against. If you needed, if I was to use an arbor press to push the shaft down into here, I could use this guy to uh, give me a nice, solid surface all the way around without any risk of damaging my cage. The other part of the equation is the quill. So you've got the uh, quill here, it faces down like so. Um, <clears throat> so I got the new 
outer race installed in here and uh, I used a similar method. Um, I actually froze this inside race, dropped it in our deep freeze and um, I just left this at room temperature because I wanted to see what happened. Uh, when I got when I dropped that race in there it went almost all the way down just with um, just by dropping it. And so what I did to get it the rest of the way down was to fit the old outer race in here and then I had a way that I could kind of set this down and that there I could just just basically put you know some heavy arm pressure on it and it slid all the way down in where it needed to be. So same deal on this side. <clears throat> this is the outer race for the uh, upper spindle bearing and uh, I took the old outer race dropped it in okay so you got that now um, faced out and, and their the faces were touching each other and then take the lock nut here and I could use that and hammer against this and get that just kind of tap that race down into place where it needed to be. Um, it did not take a, a ton of force to get that to happen, so that felt much better about tapping when I'm when I'm actually tapping versus beating. Um, <clears throat> so I've got both of these races installed. Uh, so once that's done, uh, then this guy slides on over the top, and once you've got all this slid together, then the last step is to get this bearing into place where it's supposed to be. And then this guy goes on top and provides the, uh, the preload. Um, of course, that, that looks all easy and stuff, but this, this bearing is not going to be easy to put in. Um, I can just tell by the way it feels. <laughs> it's not going to be an easy fit. So, uh, tomorrow hopefully I get my grease and I uh, can actually go, ahead and go about getting these bearings greased up and ready to go and um, hopefully get this installed and get my machine back going this weekend. Um, hopefully that helps give you an idea of what the, uh, what the, some techniques of getting this stuff out and back in. Uh, one thing I'll mention here. Um, to get these old races out, I mean, I, I can't think of any heating, cooling way that you can get them done because they're both going to heat and cool together. Um, so the uh, the old races were in there, locked in there pretty tight. So all I did, and I'm, this is definitely the Bubba technique, but I could get a big flathead screwdriver, and I could get in here, and it's going to block the light. I, can't, I don't know that I can show it. Um, but all I needed to do was just catch this um, screwdriver onto the lip of the uh, the outside races and then just start tapping. Um, no banging, no, no major whacking on it because I did not want to slip and um, scratch the journal or the bearing bore inside there but just whack it on this side, whack it on this side and just keep going back and forth and slowly um, I was able to work it out. Um, same way, I just flipped it over for the uh, for the upper race, and again, there's a little ledge down there. You can just barely see it now, and just get your screwdriver. Just got my screwdriver on there, and tap, and just keep tapping, and it will slowly um, work its way out. Just keep going back and forth, one side to the other. Um, <clears throat> So that's how I got those guys off. Um, in order to get the spindle out of the quill, um, when it's initially in there, you've got this upper bearing is in there and it's locked in place pr fairly good. So to get the uh, the quill off of the spindle, um, this is where I use the vice jaws. Um, what you want to do is just set them with an opening. Um, I start with an opening just wide enough for the spindle nose to go through. So close them up. And then all I want is the, for the uh, spindle nose to just drop through there. Of 
course. All right. So I get that that spindle nose to just get through there, and then I get the um, you got to pound the top of this of this shaft with I just use the rubber mallet so that I'm not beating anything up. Um, well, as soon as that thing actually starts to move, then I stop and um, take it out. And you're going to want to open your jaws wide enough that that bearing can, um, that the the inner bearing that's on the shaft can come out without impacting the sides of the jaws. So in this case, I got it just um, just wide enough to just catch the edges of the uh, of the quill. This is very difficult to do with one hand. So just enough to catch the edges of the quill, but plenty of space for this bearing to drop out without touching the sides. Um, very important. That's how I lost my um, my bottom bearing. Was not paying attention to that as it was starting to come out. Um, because as it starts to come free, what happens is that outer bearing is coming with it, obviously, and um, then that um, that cage protrudes quite a bit. And uh, if it catches the edges of your jaws, then you're going to um, bend that cage and the bearing is done. So yeah, anyway, to get it out of the quill, um, I just had to use a rubber mallet and uh, beat on the top of this uh, spline shaft. And slowly it, it started making its way out. Um, again, beating it probably isn't optimal. Um, if, I had, if I had more tools here, I would would have done something a little bit different, but uh, the only thing I have is the vise and the mallet at the moment. So, but <clears throat> then you got this nut here. Um, this guy goes, fits inside there and screws down, and then what that actually does is hold that holds that inside journal in place. So the we've got a little recess in here. When you turn that over and screw it down inside, then that puts pressure against that inside, that outer race, sorry. <laughs> I keep wanting to say inside. Um, <clears throat> keeps push it puts pressure against this outer race and uh, holds it in place. And then this nut goes onto your shaft, screws down, and uh, applies pressure to the uh, let's see to the inside race of the bearing at the top. So you've got it. You're you're pinching those bearings together. Uh, but that's the basics of it. Um, like I said, hopefully if somebody else was kind of looking at their shaft trying to figure out how this all goes together this helps because um, it helped me to kind of see the uh, see in Haas's, some of Haas's videos how the uh, how the thing came up, came apart and went back together uh, I'm, I'm definitely not an expert on spindles so <laughs> it took me a little while to uh, to get the picture of what was going on and what was putting pressure on what and so forth so hopefully this helps